Hello, I'm Hanna Jabour, TME for StealthWatch. I'm here to present for you a secure access orchestration using StealthWatch AMP and AnyConnect. This demo uh, will show this uh, integration with these different products. Uh, the idea is uh, how to automate a response uh, coming from a StealthWatch event into a secure X uh, using AMP and uh, AnyConnect. So the, basically, uh, we've got an endpoint that presents uh, a remote or a local worker that has uh, AMP installed on it, Cisco AMP for endpoints. Also, uh, using either the Cisco AnyConnect on-prem in a trusted network or in a remote worker that's connected through VPN to a corporate network. This network is actually monitored by StealthWatch and uh, also StealthWatch is integrated with SecureX to send alarms and also to be able to be queried by uh, SecureX for events. Uh, this alarm will be sent to SecureX and we're gonna use the orchestrator to take the information out of that event, query for, for processes from SecureX to StealthWatch and then also automate a response back to uh, Cisco and for endpoint in order to be able to block the process hashes behind those bad communications then uh, also to isolate the host that is actually responsible of that activity so we actually be able to do two things block the process across the whole enterprise plus isolate that specific host which is the source of the malicious activity so we start with the demo so we're going to start off our demo by looking at the host itself that is actually being monitored by stealth watch and where is amp installed and any connect uh, first thing we look at uh, AMP for endpoint by itself, it shows that the host is not actually isolated and it's working fine. Uh, and we're gonna also keep in the background a continuous ping to show the connectivity to the network to adjust the local host in that environment. Uh, rem remember also, AMP is uh, in there, any connect is installed on this system uh, and StealthWatch is monitoring that network. Uh, so to, to launch, uh, something bad, we have this bad script, we're gonna double click on it and launch it, and then see what's gonna happen uh, at the end of this demo with this specific host. So looking at StealthWatch specifically, now uh, we can see uh, that one event was triggered, um, which is associated with that, which is uh, the custom reputation list. Uh, so the event was actually looking at specific communication from inside to a specific blacklisted destination. If we click on the ribbon, we can see in that incident section, uh, some new incident was created. Uh, this is was automatically pushed from StealthWatch into Threats Response Incident Manager or Secure X Incident Manager. Uh, you can see this custom reputation list hit. Uh, we can see what time it actually occurred, what are the different observable associated with it, the timeline of that specific event. Uh, you can see also the description of that event, which is the destination, the source. That's the source, which is our system actually, that we are uh, monitoring using AMP and um, AnyConnect. We can see also that the event is coming from StealthWatch itself. So uh, you can either, for example, view the incidents uh, on the incident manager in CTR if you'd like, or uh, we're just like gonna continue throughout the demo. So uh, if I also wanna look from a StealthWatch perspective, what do I know about that system? If I click on that event uh, and look into more details, I can actually see that uh, this is coming from StealthWatch. Uh, this is the event. I can click view flows. I can see the source, the destination, the custom event, and also, um, we're going to look at the flows to see those specific uh, processes that are associated with that. Remember, to get the process hashes, you have to have any connect integrated into StealthWatch. So using uh, the desktop, uh, actually we have, uh, this is the desktop system uh, where we connected. This is the actual uh, uh, file hash has been used. This is the HTTPS connection. Remember, this is an example. Um, it's a custom security event. It could be any type of different event that you choose to push into uh, SecureX. And this is the different communication that actually occurred, which is, in this case, it's only one connection. So that basically from StealthWatch, what we can see. So uh, let's switch into um, Active Orchestrator and AMP and see what we have over there. So if we go into AMP for Endpoint, 
specifically into management computers. We've got the list of computers that we are actually looking at inside that enterprise. In this specific demo, I have only that specific system associated with this environment. We can see that the host is uh, on top left. You can see it's not isolated. Uh, also, we can see the IP address uh, of that system and the GUID information, which is the identifier uh, from uh, that's used inside AMP to know about a specific host. Also, if we look at the outbreak, the blocked applications, we can see there is uh, actually there a list that is uh, block apps that has zero files in it. Uh, nothing is actually blocked at the time being. So this is uh, showing AMP uh, as it is uh, for this host where there is nothing being blocked and the host is working fine. If we go to that specific workflow, uh, we have got here multiple workflow inside uh, this uh, active orchestrator. Uh, the one that we're talking about is the AnyConnect Stealthwatch Enterprise AMP Response. This one is actually uh, has multiple steps in it. So this workflow actually has multiple steps in it. If we look at the first step of that workflow is actually gathering an incident as an input, which is the incident that was generated uh, by Stealthwatch into uh, SecureX. We get that specific incident, uh, we take the information out of it and the output of this flow is actually getting IPs of that incident and the time frame. Then we log in into Stealthwatch to get specific domains. We format some dates due to the way that Stealthwatch actually look at uh, dates and how uh, SecureX look at dates. Then the first thing we do is we go back to Stealthwatch to get flows using the inputs from uh, the incident uh, uh, the get, gathering the incident and parsing the incident. This information is used along with the date formatting information, the, the, the domain ID, the source and destination IP of that specific incident. And then we got a list of process hashes. The second thing happens is uh, we use uh, the, uh, the process hashes to actually block those to uh, our AMP for endpoint uh, that's integrated with this uh, specific workflow and then this will automatically push this process hashes into a block list. Then uh, we actually gather the AMP GUID for that specific IP we extracted from the incident. That IP, we then use it to, the, uh, to do the, uh, the, the GUID, we use it to actually do the isolate host for that specific IP using the GUID. And the final step is actually posting a WebEx team message to notify that this actual action has happened with some details also gathered from that specific incident. So if we run this workflow, um, usually the workflow take an input as an incident. Uh, do the demo, just we feed it an incident just to make it run uh, at a faster pace. While it's running, it's going to go through all these stages one by one to execute all of these uh, actions and actually uh, reach out to the conclusion. So now we reached the end of the process and the process has actually succeeded. It took it around 1.2 minutes uh, to do all the different actions. Uh, then let us look at what actually happened uh, for AMP for Endpoint. Specifically, I'm gonna go into management computers first to see uh, what happened to that host. So if we look at the same desktop now, we look at the isolation has started. So we're gonna wait for it until uh, approximately it finishes. In the meantime, I'm going to look at the blocked application and uh, see if there is any process hashes extracted from Stealthwatch. Uh, look, look, there is one file now inside that list. So if I click edit, now I can see the process hash that was extracted from Stealthwatch and fed into app to being blocked. So that's now the host is contained and the process hashes is not allowed to execute across uh, the enterprise network. So th that, that was uh, mainly uh, that section. So so let us look now also into the WebEx teams. We see a notification coming from that specific bot here that's associated with this room, a notification that tells all the information about uh, what happened actually in that incident, the incident itself, the IP address, the process hash that was blocked, and the destination IP. So basically, this is the notification coming from that workflow into uh, WebEx teams. Waiting a few minutes, actually made the host change to isolated state. And now you can see there is a failure in the ping request uh, that has actually happening now. Uh, so we, we stop the ping, we scroll up, uh, the ping was functioning and then suddenly it stopped. Uh, we can also check uh, on the side of the, 
uh, AMP for endpoint itself to see the status of that specific host. If you double click on the, on the endpoint, uh, Cisco AMP for endpoint, you see that the host now is isolated. So that was the process. We've got uh, the integration happening between Orchestrator, Stealth Watch, City Author, Response, SecureX, uh, Incident Manager, uh, which is equivalent, and Stealth Watch plus AnyConnect. So the whole integration is happening between all these products and simply the orchestrator in SecureX is actually manipulating all the actions throughout the StealthWatch integration, AMP integration, and uh, using also the capability that StealthWatch has in integration with AnyConnect. So hopefully this has been informative for you guys and you have enjoyed this, uh, this video.